here we are. Right. Cheers. Clink, baby. Butter coffee with brain octane. You know, it's kind of the same old, same old, but you know, when you really get something good, you want to keep it long term. Yeah. And you miss it when you don't have it. The John and Tara podcast. 20 plus years and going strong. We're over 100 uh, podcasts, too. All right. Way to go, buddy. With a starry sneeze in the background. Yeah. <laughs> She's been doing better. Yeah. She had a kitty cold for a while. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. You got it topic? Or? I have multiple topics. Oh, geez. You know me. Uh, yep, you're a woman. <laughs> Definitely. No doubt about it. <laughs> I think, um, okay, well, I won't go off on that topic. So, I thought it'd be interesting to see what others think are, like, the best marriage tips and advice. So, I went to mm. marriage.com, which mm. is not a sponsored ad, just and we are not sponsored by Native Root Coffee, although we're drinking Native Root Coffee from nativerootcoffee.com. Right. Direct from Colombia. Is that going to be our, we should do a hashtag, not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored yeah, by. right. Right. <laughs> that would make a little bit of sense. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, marriage.com has the 75 best marriage advice and mm -hmm. tips by marriage therapists. And we're only going to cover 15. Oh, geez. <laughs> No, I have a plan to keep it keep it moving. So I'm going to read them off, and I'd like you to write down the number. Here I am, Miss Bossy Pants, firstborn. That's, that's fine. Yeah, that's you fine. like you like the Bossy Push Pants. Push me around right? a little. I'll, I'll resist when I need to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you let me know the number that intrigues you. So maybe let's think of like the the one that you, which one you think is most true. Now, these are just one-sentence phrases, and they're very short explanations by different therapists. Okay. So, so some context. There are actually 75 of these tips by 75 different therapists. We're only going to cover the top 15. So they each gave one? They each gave one, uh, from what I can tell. And, and we're just going to read the one-liners, and you're going to let me know like which one stands out like the most true, maybe, maybe the one that stands out the least true. Sure. That but, had to be confusing when you got 75 marriage tips in and like 50 of them were the same. Same people? <laughs> no, the same tip. Oh, the same tip. And then they had to go back. <laughs> they probably made a running list on, okay. Well, anyway. I have some ideas on what No, I'm, I, we're switching. I'm, I'm figuring things out. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to shut up and drink some so coffee. So refrain from dissecting the business and marketing aspects of this. Well, you know, <laughs> what did we do all day yesterday? You know? Totally. So maybe which one stands out to you the most as true, which one is false, and then I have a few other topics that we can talk about relating to this. And they're very short descriptions. Okay. So these are one-liners, and then uh, with the ones that you pick out, I'll read the full description. Okay. Potentially. One, save your breath for the time when you are in a cool headspace. Okay. Two, know how to listen and be fully present for your partner. And mind you, uh, I looked at the article and it seems like these are in no particular order. They did not like vote on them or whatever. So maybe they voted on them. <laughs> sure. Three, disconnection is inevitable and so is reconnection. Four, don't play it safe all the time. Five, put in the work to enjoy a rewarding marriage. Six, open up more to your partner and build a strong relationship. Seven, have empathy for each other's feelings and resolve issues together. Eight, make an effort to know what makes your partner cringe. Nine, be the friend to your partner who turns on their mind, not just their body. 10, be someone in your, in your <laughs> intent, I'm going to have, I did, scribbled that one. Um, 11, store your softer emotions, share your softer emotions with your partner for a lasting closeness. Yeah, I was definitely getting more lax with my handwriting. 12, marriage needs regular maintenance. Don't lax about it. Don't be lax about it. 13, make your relationship your highest priority. 14, build 
of <laughs> uh, build. Hang on, I gotta find that one too. Okay, fifteen. Take care of your marriage health and protect it from predators. <clears throat> okay, so I need to reread. Ten is. Be sincere in your intent and words. Demonstrate more affection. And then 14 is build prow prowess in both verbal and nonverbal communication. Okay, so which one stood out to you? Uh, or should I reread some of them? Okay, so um, number one, Basically, I said no anger. Um, it's what was it? Control. Save your breath for the time when you are in a cool headspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think yes, um, but I also think that you know through you know like being married this it, twenty plus years, we're more mature in our marriage, and we've both gotten hot with each other over the years, but. Um, I don't, I think when you move to a different headspace, like they said, um, I think you should always be in that headspace. You know, you'll catch yourself like, ah, you know, but um, I don't think that you should think your partner is intentionally doing something to you. You know, like they might be doing something they don't know they're doing. And so um, if you just point it out to them or say, you know, I don't understand why you did that or do you have an explanation for why you said that because I didn't I don't get it or I don't understand it's okay you know people jump to conclusions because they want to know the answer right and sometimes your own answer is wrong about what somebody else did because you do not understand what they're doing or why they're doing it so so you're saying that's not necessarily the or you're just saying I think that one's good but it's not the way they phrase it I don't, I didn't like 90% of the phrasing, you know? Yeah, that's, I did kind of give the, 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 cap, the, what is it? The uh, heads up that they are one liners and then there's very short descriptions underneath. And as I read them, it's like the, sometimes the, the catchphrase, the phrase mm -hmm. was more like you could tell it was unique to that person, you know, like that's what they would typically say. So how did it line up against our, 10 marital arts in your mind. Well, this list of 15? Yeah. Because we did mostly one word descriptions. So uh, let's, okay. Yeah, maybe so, let's do that after. So number three, I questioned as stupid. What is number three? Disconnection is inevitable, and so is reconnection. Yeah, I actually had that one marked as well. Should we read that one? Let's read that one. Sure, yeah. Because <laughs> there might be... It might be in the description. It might be better. Let's give them the benefit of the <coughs> doubt that there is something deeper there. Yeah. So this is uh, her name is Candice Creesman Maori, PhD. Uh, she's a counselor. Says this connection is a natural part of relationships, even the ones that last. We tend to expect our love relationships to maintain the same level of closeness all the time. And when we feel ourselves or our partners drifting, it can feel like the end is near. Don't panic. Remind yourself it is normal and then work on reconnecting. Now, I have a hypothesis about this. Okay. So as I've been studying about women through the men, <laughs> and this is for wifey school because it's amazing as women... We think we're the social beings, or we we tend to gravitate towards like the the communications and yeah. and so forth. I'll just say for myself, there's a heck of a lot that I don't know about women, and I have learned through you, and you've helped been helping guys, and then listening to um, podcasts and and social scientists mm -hmm. online. Okay, so big heads up. So one of the things that I've learned is that women tend to switch like if there's something unstable in the relationship like maybe maybe he's even upset about work or something or mm -hmm. you're let's just use me and you let's say you're maybe you're frustrated about something that I did there's a tendency for women to take it personally and immediately think that the relationship is at risk mm -hmm. now 
I don't do this, I think, in a large part <coughs> because you reinforce our relationship and our status and mm -hmm. your love for me often, frequently, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And so I might have this trait as a woman and just don't know it. No, you, you don't use it. <laughs> and I, maybe I don't use it. Although, uh, so uh, without going too in far the, down. In the that, past, you have said, you still love me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> After, maybe after something you know and I'm like of course yeah maybe I would imagine that was kind of that was a long time ago because I yeah. remember doing that but yeah. uh, maybe like jokingly maybe just to kind of little, stir up little, a little confirmation a little joking a little truth yeah so I hear that what women do is they might you know get upset or mope or get sad mm. then and so then you have he might be reacting to something else, you know, and he's going into his cave or whatever, and she's taking that personally. And so one of the things I read that is coaching men, uh, if you feel like you're, you need to go to your space, the garage or cave to process, because men typically don't process by sharing and, right. and conversing, right. let her know everything is fine between us. I'm going to go to the garage to wherever, just want you to know everything's fine. I just need to process for a while and then reassure her so I can see in that short explanation disconnection is inevitable that's more of a message toward, towards women yeah. saying it, it's not going to be always at you're not always going to be joined at the hip like John and Tara that's just <laughs> <laughs> an anomaly we were born Siamese twins and we love each other that much but uh, <laughs> so I think that is Something specifically that probably comes up in her practice a lot. Yeah. Benefit of the doubt here. Yeah. Yep. Well, I wrote down, you have used the word reconnection in the past um, quite a bit. I, I've never used that word um, unless we're talking about reconnective healing. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then I wrote down, John talks a lot. So, um, <laughs> yes, I do communicate uh, copiously and yep. it's part of maintaining a relationship so it's okay most of the time guys don't know what to say you know they're they don't really want to talk about their emotions because a guy's emotions are really intense right and so um you know guys historically we are the defenders and the the warriors of the tribe and that type of stuff and so um it's better, a guy will think it's better just to, to kill it, to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come back when I'm sleeping, right? So yeah. if if there if there's a there's an animal that's terrorizing a village, let's say a tiger, you know, that, that's happened in, still happens in modern day. There's tigers terrorizing villages, right? Well, you can't just... They're big cats that are bored. No, they're they're vengeful. You you can't oh, wow. just scare it away. You have to kill it mm. because if it starts killing humans, it it doesn't stop doing that. And so there was a there was some kids in a zoo. Um, and they were throwing rocks at a tiger, at a female tiger. I think her name was oh, I think it was Sheba, but um, that sounds kind of cliche, but it mm -hmm. might have been. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that very, you know, like a like an old favorite, like the like the Como Zoo in Minnesota, right? Yeah. But it wasn't in Minnesota. But this tiger was in a in an enclosure, and kids were throwing rocks at it. These mm. two kids, right? And somebody hollered at the kids and got them out of there. And and the mm. tiger then jumped out of the enclosure. Tigers can jump like 30 feet high, right? Mm -hmm. They can reach up to 30 feet. Well, we had a domestic cat that could jump on top of the fridge. Yeah. And so just, yeah. She'd just jump up and lay on the fridge. Yeah. yeah and, and it was not a short fridge. From the it floor, was, not from the counter. It was a normal height fridge. Yeah. So that that's pretty intense, right? Yeah. So this tiger, then everybody's running and screaming like, oh my gosh, the tiger is out. The tiger hunted these two boys. Mm -hmm. killed both of them and then just l laid down with with the second boy that she killed she just laid there and then the people came in the cops came in and they shot the tiger and but she was literally going after the ones that were antagonizing her 
And so that, that when, when there's a threat, you know, men, men are more along the lines of eliminate it. You know, we might want to understand it for a minute, but, you know, women, especially nowadays, are more like, well, you know, I wonder if we can understand what's going on. Can we figure it out? Can we, you know, and I'm kind of that way. I do have some, I would say, feminine traits in that sense because, you know, as you get older, you're more thoughtful. You want to, you know, maybe figure a few things out so you don't go through it again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I wrote down John Talks a lot, so that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That reminds me, though, we had a conversation with a, a woman yesterday uh, who who is an herbalist. She's been practicing many years yeah. uh, and has taught for many years. Yeah. And so, you Un, know, Uncommonly wise and uncommonly calm. Very, very wonderful woman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as we were talking, you know, you were just being yourself, which you typically are. You rarely, you know, you'll throttle back in some, you know, for the environment, yeah. but... She lives in an area after you went away. She is like, yeah, I've, I've, well, you were just un unhinged in a, not unhinged, but you I was were, on point. I was intense. We yeah. were talking about some certain things and, and she, I asked her later, I'm like, I need to rub elbows with you because, uh, you had a way, she said basically that you were judgmental to right to your face mm -hmm. and just, She's a Southerner. And, and I agreed. I yes, was like, I absolutely. I'm super judgmental. Yeah. Absolutely. And she's like, some some people would call that judgmental. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, oh. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> tip in the glass. Tip in the glass. All right. Guess oh. what that was. That's, there we go. After a nice little segue of me dumping Tara's coffee sippy cup right in her lap. Fortunately, it's a that small was, cup. And it right? was. Right. So, hey. That what I'm proud. Awesome. That was what awesome. I was proud of. Yeah. Do you want to know what? Do you want to guess what I was proud of? Uh, no, I don't want to say it. You say it. <laughs> that I didn't go, John. You said John. You did. It's on. Well, it's, I, it's recorded. <laughs> it's on the recording. But it wasn't in that way. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't a mad John. It was. Yeah. It was like, oh, John. <laughs> it was a yeah. surprise. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of got turned on by it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm like, oh, you're all wet. Oh, it's coffee. Damn. Uh. It. So, yeah, uh, little things to notice in over the years. So I put a stop to that judgmental talk, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I remember where I was. Oh, dang it. <laughs> so I just, I was amazed by, uh, you know, and I when you stepped away to feed the chickens, I, I, I said, where does that come from? Like, is that your upbringing? And like, you basically, you know, you had kind of the quintessential sweet southernness and you're able to say... Can you imagine the guys she's had to deal with? Well, that's... Then I asked her, too. She's I a said, grandma, too. So, I mean, she's, she's got a grandma. history. She said all the years she's been an herbalist, or I'm assuming all the years, uh, she mm. they're in a very military area, yeah. lots of military. And she's like, I'd have soldiers, colonels. And she's like, the colonels especially, yeah. they would ride that line between assertive a hole, yeah, you know, yeah. judgmental, yeah. and she's like, she called me Colonel John. <laughs> that was just... I think that's where she was going, John. Yeah, yes, the, yes, the Colonel. All right. And so I, I and I start a chicken franchise. And now. I said, you know, I see it in your industry. You know, it even relates to astrology, where it's very Mar Martian, like as in Mars. Yeah. Not that you guys are from Mars, but <laughs> that Martian being. It's you. You go back to the early days that it was the blacksmith, essentially, was the engineer, was the tool maker. There are some theories about Mars and about where we came from. So and relating to war, war so, and technological society. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's they are not just coincidences. But before going off too far, and I'm track, oddly attracted to technology. Oddly. Well, I I'm like the Johnny All American. You know, I. I look like I've looked like a jock I've looked like a kind of a meathead not like a super muscle bound meathead but I've been you know pretty the classic meathead not the modern juiced up meathead no not the TRT meathead but yeah. I've, I've been a gym rat you know weight uh, you know gyms and health uh, yeah lifting and martial arts so mm -hmm. so yeah but I'm a super tech geek you mm -hmm. know so I go to the if I go to the Apple store, I give the geniuses a run for their money, yeah. you know? And so anyway, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
So I was attracted to tech. I was really just impressed mm. by. I mean, that soft skill is is so important and is so valuable. Mm. You know, to not take it personally when you have yeah. someone who is more bold yeah. and and just says it how it is mm. in front of you. And she just seemed to just like process it all so reasonably and so beyond reasonably. Yeah. Yeah. I forget why I brought that up as far as this. Okay, we were back to disconnection is inevitable. Um, I think there's something about, you know, oh, well, you, you learned were talking from her about. You didn't, you didn't yell angrily at me. You, it was more of a softer. Well, I wouldn't, and I'd say that's, it's a longer term kind of reprogramming myself to, mm. and underneath that's a sign of, if you're frustrated with a person, you'll, your spontaneous mm. reaction will show that frustration. <laughs> Hence, getting back to mm. save your breath for when you are in a cool headspace. Yeah. And definitely, while I like to think that I'm calm minded and, and so forth, you know, it's not necessarily true when you're caught up in it or you're you you're emotional you're yeah. and there's a wide range of emotions it doesn't it, and so we know that a certain part of your brain shuts off when you're highly emotional mm. and there have been times where it definitely has helped for me just to take some time and and then we come back together and and talk and you present things a, a little bit different way I'm able to see them a little bit differently and po most of all I could just even get out of my own emotional sphere well, over the years we both escalated I more match what the other person is doing you know I'm I'm like a matcher so if somebody if somebody starts hollering at me you know I'm I will holler at them maybe a little bit less than they are just to m be in that space and match and then if it escalates from there generally if they escalate again, I then I beat them. I, I escalate above them. I, I move above and to show them that, you know, there there is authority here and I'm not going to be pushed around and I'm not gonna be, you know, or falsely accused or anything, you know, like that. You know, I Yeah. That's how it's and that's kinda of how guys do it, you know, like Jordan Peterson says, you know, when men communicate there's always the threat of violence, you know, and and that's true. You know, I've been in a heck of a lot of fights over the years, and and so, you know, thankfully I don't do that anymore. But <laughs> yeah, what's next on your list of mm -hmm. one that you're okay? Number six, I put a star by. So why mm -hmm. don't you read that again? Open up more to your partner and build a strong relationship. Read the description. In general, obviously, that's really good. And I'll mm -hmm. talk about how men open up. Okay. This is by Brenda Whiteman. She's a counselor. The more you say, the more you talk, the more you express your feelings, the more you tell your partner how you feel and what you're thinking, the more you open up with your true self, the more likely it is that you will build a solid foundation for your relationship now and for the future. Hiding thoughts and feelings is a surefire way to unravel the foundation of your intimacy. So, of course, that description was from a woman. Um, <laughs> I would say from the man's side, I'd, okay, let, I'll talk from the woman's side for a second. I think women need to um, express their love, appreciation, respect, and trust to men. Those would be the top things that a man wants. Okay. Love, appreciation, and uh, love, appreciation, respect, and trust. Love, appreciation, respect, and trust. Not necessarily in that order, but um, I think I think people think that men know more about what women think because they talk a lot. Um, but the percentage of talking on this podcast will probably be more me again. Yeah. <laughs> because generally it is but um, I don't think that men know or hear enough from women the things that will motivate them you know um, that will motivate the men yeah that will motivate the men I, th I don't think that men hear that from women it's not about motivating men it's not about giving them 
motivation. Like I, you know, I know you can do it, uh, you know, and oh yeah, if you do that, you'll probably do this and you'll probably get this and make that much money and you'll probably, you know, that's not motivating for men. That's like the woman coming out and being the foreman on a building project. You know, the guy's going to be like, hey, you know, um, can you go make some sweet tea or some lemonade? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work out well. Um, but it seems like you're implying that men do want motivating behaviors from or from their woman. The woman can do it up from a base foundation level, right? Yeah. And that is... But is that true? Men do it want what they like as motivating Absolutely. behaviors. Absolutely. Okay. And what if, are those? Well, it's it's behaviors, right? Yep. So you can show your love, you can show your trust, you can show your appreciation, you can show your respect through behaviors, right? I'm not I'm not talking love languages like yeah. acts of service, you know, give me acts of service. I need acts of service. You know, that's not that's not it. Or physical touch or you know, all those things are great. But, you know, there, there's, there's some conceptual things that guys need, you know, got a guy, even if a woman feels insecure, the way for her to feel secure is to give the guy what she wants, you know, to give that guy security and more than likely you will see reciprocation. Right, the woman has to be a queen in order for the man to be a king, and then the man can go out and conquer. You know, once his kingliness is established, and he then will feel the responsibility of taking care of the queen that he loves, right? And he will want to provide more for the bounty and the castle. So, John, how do we do that? What? What, what are the behaviors? I just said it. The, those four things. Yeah, but how the, how those, would you show those, love? Well, what happens is that's that's where the that's where the five love languages come a in. A warm right? greet. No, no. Nope. F the five love what? languages. I'm just saying, <laughs> a warm greeting. If you're at home, when I get home, what do I want from you? I mean, almost immediately, I want to be noticed, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not that's not none that's none of the five language love languages. That's I'm. And don't try to categorize it. I'm just saying <laughs> it's it's before the five love languages, there was eons of successfully married people. Were you burp talking? I did. I burp talked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And to let out some gas. You know? Thankfully, it was a burp, right? Yeah. <laughs> I could have held it in and pushed her through. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So before the five love languages. <laughs> Before the five love languages, there was there was uh, how many tens of thousands of years of successful relationships, hundreds of thousands of years, right? That's how humans have propagated and and lived, right? So, I don't think you have to be starving to be thankful that the husband comes home with a paycheck, you know, because of where we live and how we live and the times we live in, it's very easy to live. Right. It's mm -hmm. and it's and it's very difficult to be different. It's very, very difficult for a guy to stand out mm -hmm. and be different. Right. So a woman should notice the unique things about him. And if she can't see anything unique, she should appreciate the the sameness. You well, know, what is burp talks? I mean, yeah. That's right. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. Instead of being embarrassed to make a joke out of it, be funny. Be, that's what guys love. You know, guys hang out. Guys fart. You know, you're standing there in a group and you're talking to guys and some guy will just rip one and then it's fun. It's funny. I mean, it's, <laughs> guys don't hold it in. They might hold it in on a date when they're first dating, <laughs> but, you know, he'll go to the bathroom and every guy standing at a urinal farts. Yeah. Right? He's peeing. Ah, something wants to come out the back. All right. Burp. You know? <laughs> And then the next guy, you know, and then all of a sudden it's a competition, you know, <laughs> then everyone's pushing and then somebody goes, burp, oh no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have to run to a stall. You know, it's, it, it's, they, they should call it the little boy's room, not the men's room <laughs> because, you know, it'll, it'll be, you know, have I've you ever, heard it called that. have you ever, I showed you those videos probably where nowadays, you know, like, like a bunch of monkeys, right? So if you're in a Home Depot and, and some guy goes, woo, 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 all of a sudden the whole store will erupt. <laughs> you 
You know, everybody starts doing it. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, it starts yeah. because you're by the Milwaukee Isle. And oh, then... The oh, 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 Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we would accept a sponsorship, not sponsored by Milwaukee Tools, but that would go well, so... Well, let's put that out, hashtag Milwaukee Tools, because yeah. I have a tool Milwaukee wall. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I splurged this last year and got myself all the tools and he bought a brand new big Milwaukee toolbox they have done an amazing job you know we even consider it so we have a commercial like kitchen yeah we even consider so we don't have drawers so yeah. we, we even considered getting uh, one of their drawer units yeah like a, a roller yeah, yeah. The, the base roller for yeah for kitchen utensils mm -hmm. absolutely it'll be so much fun <laughs> so the the me one of me and my guys we talk a lot of Milwaukee and and we said you know we're in machine tool trades and designing and stuff and I said to him one day I said if I had to work anywhere hmm. I would have loved to work at Milwaukee when they came in and they said we want to take over the market mm -hmm. blow it up have fun mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do let's figure it out and they made all this modular stuff and everything clips together fits together the boxes. You know, they got floor mounts for your vehicle so you can lock your toolboxes in and they don't slide around in the back of the truck. Wow. So I've seen sprinter vans completely outfitted like my wall, right? Yeah. The whole thing is outfitted and every tool has its place and everything's locked up and you can put padlocks on them too. And wow. yeah, they rent all out and they clip together kind of like Legos and mm -hmm. lock in place. And yeah, it's, it would have been a fun place to work during that time. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, come up with it. They even came out with ice augers for the drills. I mean, they came out with anything you can think of. Uh, and then on top of it, I mean, they, they got to be killing the industry because they the pricing is incredible it, great, for what it great is. Great pricing, yeah. Well, what they want, they want you to buy the toolboxes because then you'll always buy the tools. Are you going to put a yellow drill in your red box? Well, that doesn't clip onto something. I'm not going to say this too loud, but I threw away a few drills that were the wrong color. Oh no. <laughs> it sounds like some people could have used them. You could just get... oh, I don't John. care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> okay. So by the way, so I think actually how those monkey sounds start is it is obligatory when you walk by the Milwaukee Isle that you go Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we should go out. in here. You see wives dragging their husbands away from the aisle. <laughs> no, no. That's why guys go to Home Depot alone. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, where is it your grandma works? Uh, Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm. Yeah, go to Fleet Farm alone. Or Runnings. You got yours at Runnings. Didn't Runnings, you? go there alone. Spend as much time as you want in the red aisle. <laughs> red and black. Yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome. So, number six, I said very important. Or number nine, I said very important. Which one is that? Well, oh. we're going to have to come back to, we'll do a whole podcast on how, how to motivate your man. Okay. I'm going to write that down because that deserves, you know, because for many reasons. Okay, number nine. What about number nine? Number nine, very important. I Be the friend to your partner who turns on their mind, not just their body. Yeah. 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 Um, we talked about this in the last podcast, which I think was number eighty no, or number ninety-eight, I believe. Um, and we talked about. Oh, I'm trying to think about it. Anyway, um, in oh, uh, working off the strengths of of your partner, mm. you know, just like you would work off the strengths of your coworker. You know, if you were on a on a race team. You know, the one of the I think I I can attribute a lot of things to racing mm -hmm. because there is no um, there's no faking it. There's no pretending you know how to tear apart a motor. There's no there's no leaving tools behind that you're going to need at the track. There's no there's there's no not bringing food because you're going to be hungry. You got to pack water. You got to you know. Yeah, they sell water. Nowadays, they sell water bottles at the track. But when I was racing, they, you know, there was concessions, but it was all shit food, you know, and you didn't eat it. The racers didn't eat it. Their families did, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you had to pack those good, healthy things. You know, my mom would bring stuff when I was young. My mom would bring, 
you know, hard boiled eggs and egg salad sandwiches and, you know, real protein based, you know, performance kind of foods, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we didn't have all the, the super duper, you know, bull testosterone drinks nowadays, you know, we didn't, yeah. Red Bull, you know, we didn't have that kind of stuff for pre-workouts or anything like that. We had protein powder and carb powder, you know, back then. And my favorite carb powder was banana flavored. <laughs> it was it was pretty good. But back then protein tasted like chalk. You know, you, you literally choked it down, you got used to it. That's why all this stuff nowadays is so sweet and so yeah. overly. But anyway, um I think I got a lot out of racing because it's like you have to perform, right? Mm -hmm. And so all along the way in my working work a day world when I had jobs I excelled and I got to the top of the position and then I if I could transfer positions in the company I would and this is from the time I was 15 years old I've had a full-time job and I'm 53 now and my my performance was always too high it was uh, people are always telling me to slow down you know people told me at several jobs you're making us look bad you know that kind of stuff and I'm like Dude, I'm here to work. I'm here to get the job done. I'm here to make money. I'm here to get a raise. How about that? You know, and and I don't I don't want to be here. I have to be here to make money. You know, this is the best job I could get right now. It's the best job I could find in our town and blah blah blah, right? And so they would they would start razzing me, railing on me, and I would lecture them. And then they didn't want to talk to me anymore because, you know, I was telling them that they were lazy and Stop telling me to slow down, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so I just, I have to get the word of the day popped up. Just want to make sure we're still recording. There we are. <coughs> so, the the leveraging, so like if, if my brother was really good at tearing apart the radiator, if, if I had a coolant problem, I would say to my brother, get on that. If my dad was better at it, I would say get on that. We would you never would would coddle anybody, right? Because the if you had an hour to take your motor out of your bike and tear it apart and re-ring it and you know, whatever you were doing, you couldn't put the slow guy on it. Yeah. It, you didn't care about their well, I really like to work on engines. Yeah, well, you can't do it. We only have an hour. It's gonna take you three hours, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how guys are, right? That's how guys learn, that's how guys you know, a guy learns to go faster because other guys, they just won't let him do the job. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's a waste of our time if we let you do it. Yeah. You know, and so then that guy will practice. He'll be like watching what the other guys do and learning and all of a sudden he can do it in an hour. Good. All right. Now I need you to do it in 40 minutes because if something happens and it won't start, we're taking it out again. Yeah. You know, and, and now we're missing our moto and that's, you know, that's sacrilege. You know, you don't miss a moto for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, I mean, I've seen guys crap their pants on the track. You know, it's like they didn't have time. They didn't, you know, all of a sudden they got to they gotta go and they don't have time. The moto's going to start. They got to be on the line and, you know, hold it until you get out there. So you're standing up and, <laughs> you know. Wow. Uh, so how does that relate to be the friend to your partner who turns on your their mind, not just their body? Well, it, I think it <laughs> completely relates in the sense that you're – you're working on their strengths, right? Okay. So if I'm trying to leverage our relationship, I'll take it out of work. It, it took a little bit of a shift in my brain. If I'm trying to leverage our relationship and let's say you're not good at something or, or there's one emotion you have a hard time dealing with. Like if you get angry, you only escalate. Well, I'm going to try and make you laugh because when you laugh, when anybody laughs, their mind calms down, the, the, uh, the, the dopamine starts flowing, the cortisol shuts off, the, the person gets more pliable and they're more affable to what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're super angry at me, if I can do something to make you laugh, I'm, I'm going to leverage a strength for our relationship and then you're going to listen and I'm going to, I'm going to turn on your mind, you know, and <laughs> turn you on intellectually and you're going to be like, wow, I really like being with this person, you know, especially if I take you from being angry to laughing, 
You know, what's the number one thing people say women want? A funny guy. Funny. You know, now, a good sense of humor. now they don't want a practical joker. But no. That's oh a gosh. whole different thing. <laughs> we could do a whole podcast on <sighs> no pranks. guys abusing their women through practical jokes. But anyway, we can, we can move on. So the leverage strength. If you've been with somebody for a while, you know what they're good at. You know what they don't like. You know, don't antagonize them with what they don't like. You know, move in the direction of things they're good at and things they like. And then you'll become the person they like. Hmm. It's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. You know, I could do a whole course on how to steal a guy's girl. You know, I, I, I know guys, you know, that that's all they do. You know, they get the rush out of, you know, mm. finding out a woman is married or dating and, and they're <coughs> going to, they get the, they get a rush out of going after it, you know, and it's a conquest, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's not many adventures in our life anymore in, in America, at least. I mean, we could go to Africa and there's anacondas, there's lions, there's tigers. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Leverage strengths. Mm-hmm. We talked about that in, in, eight, in 98, podcast 98. Like and subscribe and share with your friends. <laughs> share. Oh, here's a good thing. If anybody listens to this point, 41 minutes in the podcast, share some of our podcasts with a couple, a friend, a a. F- a, a couple that you know that's having relationship problems. Yeah. <laughs> just just do just it. Just do it. Put yeah. it in their face that you see they're having problems and they need to listen to something like this. Mm-hmm. They, they will get, you might not think that what we're talking about is pertinent or makes much sense, but people that are having trouble will learn so much and relate to certain things and will learn new things and understand and go, oh, wow, I'm doing it wrong. They might. Yeah. So, right. moving on. Um, 11, share emotions. Share your softer emotions with your partner for a lasting closeness. I yeah. had to read this one to kind of... I don't think you can do that too soon. I, I think... I, I'm, okay, what let me say it this way. That you that can means. do it too soon. Tell that me I, what you think that means. Because I had to read this one... I, I, admittedly, I didn't read the ex- explanation for all of these, but some of them, I'm like, that one's got to mean a little something different. Than now, well, nowadays it's kind of flipped. If we if we follow the trends, it's kind of flipped. Women are are women have been fooled into thinking that they can be like men and sleep around. You know, back in the day, there was like it, when I was in high school, uh, three probably three girls that you knew were having sex. Yeah. Right. That that got because guys would talk and 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 you could see it in their demeanor. You could see it in their you know, you you could say they were slutty, you know, and and you could see it in how they behaved. And, you know, they always had a boyfriend, but they never had a boyfriend. You know, it was always like, yeah, I'm seeing Dave. And then the next day I was like, well, no, I'm seeing Mark now. And, you know, <laughs> and, and <clears throat> I hate to say it, but they they literally got passed around. And, you know, and and, uh, nowadays girls are, a lot of the girls are doing it to themselves. You know, they're trying to act like guys saying, and they've told girls, you know, you need to get to know yourself. You know, you need to find yourself and, and be adventurous. And, you know, it's okay to this and that, you know, and there's so many different birth control methods um, and, and it's pervasive in the society. So I think it's gotta be really tough for parents, especially that have daughters. Yeah. Because, you know, guys have always been willing, right? But women are the gatekeeper. You know, women have to say no. And I should say girls have to say no. You know, eight, 16 and above, they got to be saying no. Right. Until, you know, I don't, I don't know what the age is per se, but, you know, I know what the age was when, you know, for my girlfriend in high school, you know, and, and you know, that, that, in between 16 and 18, you know, that's kind of a common age when young people are going to be adventurous and, and, you know, learn about stuff. I know that's a lot younger nowadays, but, um, I think America needs to teach women to be the gatekeeper because I'll make a prediction. If, if we don't do it, a massive religion is going to come along and do it and everybody's going to get sucked into it because it'll be it'll be a wave it'll be a momentum and it'll be like a a black hole you know 
everyone will get sucked into it and and women will be wearing fabric over their head and and everybody will be happy about it because it will bring some order and some peace because young people can't handle no reins they they can't handle being off the farm you know they you mean co complete freedom and autonomy complete freedom and autonomy is destructive to young people destructive i i, li I listened to jordan peterson again the other day and i was hearing him say you know this guy was questioning him you know why why wouldn't you listen to those college students and that were yelling at you and why wouldn't you acquiesce to their and this guy wanted jordan to acquiesce because he's like you know, they're the next generation. He was, I had all these really weird statements. Like, they're the next generation, and they're going to be the thought leaders. And Jordan was like, give me a break. He's like, these under 30, you don't know anything. He goes, don't tell me you know how, how to run the government. Don't tell me you know how the power systems work. Don't tell me the power, meaning electrical and gas and the energy systems, right? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me all this. You know... These people, first of all, need to organize their own lives. You know, we've got 16 to 18 year olds marching in the streets telling us what to do. That, that is the downfall of a society because these kids, they're selfish. They want what they want. And when they get it, they, they laugh at you like, ha ha, I got one over on you. That's a child. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, an adult debates and understands that if there's a consensus in the room, then they're going to have to go with it. A child screams and hollers and over talks you and stomps their feet and throws a tantrum and then when they get their way, they're 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 slyly satisfied. You know, they, they have a might be a gloat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and then there's an animosity in them towards you. And that's not what adults do. You know, it's and he says we have a lot of adult children in this country now, in America. The people that literally didn't grow up because they haven't gone through the processes to grow up. Yeah, you know. there's, I mean, you can find it in, represented in so many areas, you know, like babies literally need to crawl before they can, well, you can walk. No, and they stand. can't. What? So before you, they fall down and get back up. So you, you develop your abdominal muscles, you create the lumbar curve by crawling first right. and, and then by falling, getting, standing up and falling down. And standing up again, you build the leg muscles then to be able to, to walk. walk. Yeah. And you even think, so for example, plants, baby plants, need to push up against the soil to develop the strength. They need actually wind yep. to, yeah. to develop the strength in their stems yep. to stand up as well. And so you literally, I mean, it's... Re it's the same. When there's things. stress, the, the, the organism strengthens. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'll say this. That's why we got all the strains of COVID because the because they vaccinated during the the pandemic, right in the middle of it. They and they vaccinated people that had it, and then the the virus strengthens and mm -hmm. mutates and grows immune. So, every, so yeah. everything when you go to the gym, you don't get muscle unless you lift things. You know, and you you put stress against it, and you your body automatically strengthens. And you need it, though, from various angles. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to overdevelop on one side and underdevelop on another. Yeah. So okay. how about we get back to what do you think? Because this one was interesting. I, re I read this one further. Share your softer emotions. It's interesting mm -hmm. to me that you picked this one out. Mm -hmm. What do you th actually think that this meant? Share your softer emotions with your partner for, for long-lasting closeness. What do you think that... He I, meant by that. I picked it out as a negative, actually. Okay. So, I, you know, we're not getting, we're not getting f what phase people are in with this, right? It's right. This is quite across the board. General. Like, but I'm going to read what what Dr. Trey Cole go said. Ahead. And I assumed actually another thing that we'll talk about at the end, if we have enough time, is the number of women versus men's uh, input and where it ranked. Mm-hmm. Then we can get into our business and marketing dissecting if we if we have time. So I assumed that this one's like more that was from a woman. But then when I read the explanation, I was like, okay, that that's where he's going with that is different than the one liner. People tend to fear uncertainty and unfamiliarity when we debate 
intellectualize or share harsh emotions with our partners that tends to drum up fears in him or her about uncertainty in the relationship. Instead, examining what our softer emotions are, such as how our partner's behavior activates those fears of uncertainty, and learning how to share those can be disarming and increase closeness. So instead of uh, harsher comments and you make me feel this way or this is, this is what you did or maybe even just topics that are more, more inflammatory, you know that are inflammatory between the two of you. This does seem like more of a feminine approach you know, in, in the one-liner description and the explanation. Um, I think you need both, though. I think you need the, the director. Sometimes you need to have maybe sometimes the, the shock factor of, is that what you just said? You know, kind of, because if you get too soft in soft emotions, it can go into blah, blah land, you know? So most women don't like soft men. Now, I'll say this, right? Women choose softer men when they're on birth control pill, right? When they're on the hormone birth control pill because they their body is being tricked into being pregnant and so they want a more sensitive, softer guy. Mm -hmm. When they go off of that pill, well, I don't know the percentage, but it's a very high percentage that they don't love their partner anymore because they were on different hormones when they chose that man. And then I'm sure when they get off the pill, they're, they're in a different mode because they don't, their body doesn't think it's pregnant, right? And so then they have this soft guy and they're like, what the heck, I'm not even attracted to this guy. Yeah. You know? I'm gonna ask you, I agree. Um, and there's plenty of social science to prove that. But so, but to a guy, you know, because if, if we've, we've had talks about emotional stuff and you know, guys tend to be more direct and there are times where I'm, I'm actually, especially in business, working on being more direct, you know, but the, what's the challenge for me is being direct enough but also not being like blunt or harsh because there's a fine line between being direct and blunt and harsh. So when, let's say we we're having an emotional, emotion-filled discussion, you know, and you're like... <clears throat> and I'm you, weeping in the corner and I'm just... Well, women <laughs> tend to already use the softer language. So to yeah. me, this advice is to men more so, you know, use softer language so that, you know, you're, so that the reaction isn't the, just the reaction to how you're expressing things and... So, uh, a, a narration. So, what would be an instance? Maybe I can't even think of something like an instance that were uh, hypothetical. Someone's getting upset about something. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe this doesn't happen. But uh, you're upset at me for spending a hundred dollars over bu budget, you know? <laughs> and 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 you're like, I uh, thought, I thought. Well, how would a guy say that directly? I'm trying to get Terry, we came up with a budget and you blew it. And I and okay, so that's direct. <laughs> yeah. And it and then it, and then I might say but I felt I thought that we had agreed to if there were certain circumstances it was okay, you know, mm -hmm. every once in a while to go over it. Now that's a little too logical. That's not Yeah, that's it's not a soft. little you started out really good with I felt I feel, yeah, I was yeah. trying. <laughs> yeah. And well, I'd be like, we can't be purchasing emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling. Oh no! I don't want to like. Just be, uh, just be what you think a woman would be like. I'm not, I, but I do don't want to like. Do it. <laughs> Slam them all. Do it. No, because I'm not that way. But <laughs> but someone else might say something like. But I was feeling upset that day, and I just needed yeah, to get. Yeah, I a, didn't think I, about it, and I got an extra coffee, and then I got a donut, and then I got a. A hundred dollars worth of donuts, and yeah. I feel so much better. <laughs> All right, well, bring that large booty over here. <laughs> now you're calling me fat. <laughs> no, just said large. Uh, <laughs> didn't say anything about fat, although I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can see how they're trying this. This counselor might be saying. You know, sometimes the directness can be felt as harsh. Of course, of course it is. Right. Yeah, it's because usually the direct is true. 
because it's a simple statement. You know, Tara, we had a budget and you blew it. I don't like when you use that tone. I don't like the way you said that. Okay, well, you're, def you're deferring from, from the fact that you're wrong and I'm right. And it's not about right and wrong. I'll tell you that right now. It's just you were wrong. <laughs> you, know, you spent too much money. You spent $100 over budget. I can't believe it. And now I can't get that Milwaukee gadget that I have been looking forward to. I would to. never have a budget, you know that. <laughs> I know, but that's what makes this weekend joke. It's hilarious, it. I know. Yeah, but you're coming up with a better woman's response than, than I am. Here's a question. Do I do that? Do You've I? never dealt with women. If you have to deal with women like that, you break up with them. You're yeah. like, ah, I can't deal with her. Yeah. <laughs> Well, women can really be well you tell me how do you deal with a woman that's irrational complaining and blaming something else for what she did and then ultimately she's mad at you you have to love her a lot to to your stick love, with it yeah. yeah 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 well i was listening to the other day i brought this to you i was listening to these women have a talk with andrew tate right mm -hmm. and <clears throat> although a lot of the principle I'll, I'll give this disclaimer right a lot of the principles tate says are true he just says them in a in a he says them in the wrong way, and in in the way <clears throat> this is a perfect example. And we're going to do a podcast Harsh. at some point in the future about what is happening, why yeah. why things are being set up the way they're being set up. So, um, and this is not a theory of mine. This is what I see. You know, the I'll say a little bit of it right now. These guys that are talking about it's okay for men to have multiple women. You know, if I got a wife at home, blah 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 blah. And she should be happy that I come home and it's okay if I'm out and gone and doing things and I have sex with other women. That's okay because I love my wife. I'm just having sex over here. What that's going to turn into, because having multiple wives is illegal in America, there's a certain religion that's coming, that's growing, that's becoming, you know, whatever it's becoming. And eventually they're going to, you don't have, they're going to, um, they are going to get the laws changed in the United States so men of a certain religion can have multiple wives because the United States is the only country that truly matters in the world because we're the only ones that take care of things. Now people will say colonialism, people will say blah, 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 people will say all this about capitalism, but if when the United States falls, the world is a different place and mm -hmm. it's, it's sliding. Yeah. So I'm just saying that out loud. Take it for what you want to take it as. Figure it out for yourself. The, the answer is you have to find what appeals to your woman and you have to figure out if she is damaged. You have to figure it out. John, I've, I'm I've, feeling a little... I've, I've had multiple <laughs> relationships before you and I've been with you now for 20 almost 23 years so we've known each other for 23 years now okay so we've been together 22 for sure mm -hmm. <laughs> 22 and and some months um and i am with you mm -hmm. that's a statement i have a good crazy you're, detector ah you're not crazy no fortunately yeah, yeah for, very fortunately because that's... you can live with crazy but you will live a crazy life yeah and it's very, very difficult. And I, I feel very sorry for women that have been told the opposite of their nature and they've taken it on and because they are, they are a house divided and that house will always fall. This is a perfect point to... I don't think, you, you can disagree with me, I don't think I tend to go into the typical woman way of thinking of I feel... Oh my gosh, you're abandoning me. Of course, you reinforce your love a lot for me. There's that. I have to give that. By that the way, huge, I, I love you. Yeah. There's that huge <laughs> disclaimer that I'm sure helps a lot. But even before I knew you, I wasn't like insecure feeling like with, with guys. It's mm. like, okay, he's, he's not into me. All right. Yeah. Um, so our well, example earlier. You didn't take earlier, it personally because you were overweight. You that these are some you you were a large child. Okay, but let me continue for a moment. So here. you developed a personality and a will. You didn't live off your beauty. 
when women that live off of their beauty, once a guy doesn't pay attention to it, it's, it's shocking to the psyche, right? Because they're used to saying no. They're used to pushing off. They're used to being seen when they walk in a room. And then all of a sudden, if no one's looking at them, they're looking at the person that's not looking at them because they're like, what's going on? Did I, do I have, do I have a booger? Do I, am I something <laughs> going on? Do I have a smudge on my face? It's you usually know? chocolate. Is it embarrassing? That is what's going on with, am I going to be embarrassed? You know, what is it? Yeah. You know, because they're just so used to it mm -hmm. and guys all know that, you know, there, there are women that you have fun with and there are women that you marry. So you know? I grew up around crazy. I know. And I think and there you is, went the other direction. There is a fortunate whether I don't know what it was, I'll just say God. I'll More give credit, coffee. I'll give credit to God that I chose to go the other way. Yep. Was, there was a point in my left life I remember as a kid. I don't think it was so much. It was conscious to a certain mm -hmm. degree, but I would go out in the garage, hang out with my dad, and I think there was a part of me that turned off. Like, yeah, I think it'll be better to learn guy stuff well you were teased for playing with dolls you were teased because you had a little pooch a belly and you were teased about being pregnant mm -hmm. and you veered away from the woman that was teasing you and, and you were like oh well, i don't want to be that way towards people so your, your subconscious said, automatically registered that's not how you treat people and then associate it with a woman and women in general yeah. and, and particularly that side of the family yeah and the other side of the family, uh, I had lots of aunts, but you know how, well, anyways, um, so I just spent, I think, aimed to spend more time with my dad. You know, I'd gravitate more in that direction. Yeah, you went to the hunting shack and you went deer hunting. Yeah, or he would be working in the garage or something and be like, what's that? What does that do? Yeah, <laughs> you know? and he'd just explain it like a guy. Yeah, and... I think in a way that was probably a saving grace in the sense like, you know, you have a very direct and blunt way of communicating, but not all the time. Like, it's not like you're always barking at me or There's something. There's nothing flowery about an alternator, Tara. I mean, if There's, <laughs> that's true. But so I, I think there is a part of me that doesn't necessarily go automatically to the, the female brain, which yeah. is like, I'm feeling this and oh my God, this emotion came over me sometimes more so related to business but and or if it's a logical thing like i'm more likely to bring up the budget kind of thing like didn't you know we had this imaginary budget yeah <laughs> and in my brain d would that do you agree that i don't tend to go because i couldn't even come up with that example when you were like this is what the guy is saying and the woman would say but i was feeling this and then this happened and then that happened guys learn early to control their emotions. Women are told to express themselves, right? Women, women are naturally going to have, and women naturally have a feeling of insecurity, right? Mm -hmm. Women are more neurotic. We, the, I mean, these are all, you said you brought up social sciences. This mm -hmm. is all, it's, it's, it's all observable by a person that, observes people. I'm not going to say it's scientific. It, it doesn't, it, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's psychological. You know, it's, it's, it's at the core of what a woman represents and what a man represents. And if me and you were to fight, you would lose. If you had a knife, you would lose. If you had a baseball bat, you would lose. If you had a gun and I was close to you, you would lose. If I, you know, it, there, there is no, there is nothing that you could do I mean, you might get in a few good shots and you might hurt me, but if it was life and death, you would lose. And that's just structure, all right? Now, women are women. Physical structure. Women carry the baby. Women carry life, right? Women, women nurture. Women have breasts. The breasts turn into, you know, the snack bar. And... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> we should, all of a sudden there's lights above and <laughs> stools below and headlights knockers <laughs> melons snack bar oh. so <laughs> uh, okay. well you know hey you're an old guy you're a woman you're you're hearing it straight yeah so it's it's uh, not taking it emotionally or personally <laughs>
No, you know, what, what, what do you want? You know, do you want to be a woman that men are attracted to or do you want to be a woman that men run away from? I mean, well, in our situation, all other men have to run away. Only you are. No, I get that. But I'm saying in general, you know, we're, we're talking to people, hopefully we're talking to people that are trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right? People that have got it figured out are not going to be listening. You know. So getting back to more specifically the emotional reaction and the, the harsh kind of communication, because this was well, harsh. Guys versus... learn to shut it down, their emotions early. Not, not turn them off, but keep them in check. So is it true, like we just brought up, you brought up, you know, I've had more insights to women working with women in business. And absolutely, even in business, they be, they come across as more neurotic and w worried to the point of even, I've worked with paranoid people. It is very women. difficult. Women. women, yeah. You have to say and your words. Women. Use your words, Tara. <laughs> is it true? Would Can we simplify to say, a guy will put up with that. Now we're just we're not even saying that like to get laid. Yeah, yeah. essentially, we'll, you know, because it seems like guys do really enjoy and love women when if like they'll put up with that, right? If guys have a sure thing, they'll drive across the country, bypassing millions of women. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. I mean, if, 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 if a young guy says, I'm going to California, and an old guy says, what are you going to California for? Nothing but a bunch of hippies and faggots out there, you know, because he's a southern guy, obviously, okay. and he's got an accent. Yeah. And the young guy goes, well, I've got a girl. Mm -hmm. And the old guy's going to go, going to get laid, huh? And the young guy goes, yeah. And he goes, more power to you, boy. Get in that car and drive fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, there's tens of thousands of women in your town. There's millions you're going to bypass going to California for that one, for that one sure thing, you know. And and then you get there and she's with Biff on Muscle Beach and you're heartbroken, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh. No, apparently his name is Chad these days. I don't know that. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that. You're a woman. You might know that. I, to me, that is, it is mind-boggling and amazing. But if a woman tells a guy she's going across country to get laid, she'll be shut down, turned off. She'll be like, no, it'll be like, uh, yeah, no, honey, you might not want to do that. You know, what if, what if that guy's out there cheating and blah, blah, blah. And then the woman will say the same thing to a, to a, a young lady, right? And so women and men, boys and girls get treated differently by both sexes, right? Mm -hmm. The woman will try and protect the girl. The man will try and protect the girl. The, the man will tell the boy, go, f go for it. Because innately we know that men are built for adventure. And innately we know that women are built for loyalty and, and security and to be in one place and to take care of themselves and not, you know, not get pregnant, not get diseases, not get their emotions hurt. Everybody knows innately if a woman falls in love and gets cheated on or, 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 or beaten or whatever a guy does to, you know, just a guy says, I don't love you anymore, that devastates a woman way more than it does a guy. You know, women don't go out and have, 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 uh, uh, what, in between relationship sex, right? They don't go out and, nowadays they might, but guys, that, how do guys get over a gal? They go out and have a lot of sex with, a lot of gals. How do women get over a guy? They sit in their room for six months and cry, you know? So you can't tell me that men and women are the same. And the adults don't treat boys and girls or young men and women the same. There's always a level of, okay, be careful tonight, honey, you know, to the girl, you know, watch yourself, make sure you have friends with you, da, 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 right? And the guys go, I'm going to club, going all by myself. All right, have fun, mm -hmm. you know? Don't drink too much. Oh, well, you know I will. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> but if women do that, they get they get a lot of problems. You know, they they bring a lot of problems to themselves and they can ruin their own emotional state so that guys in the future will not be able to be with them. Yeah. Yes. And previous history stuff certainly is a factor. Well, it just needs to be said plainly. You know, it just we can't pretend. You know, it's like pretending 
oh, Tara, you know, you're 115 pounds and, and you know, Chuck Liddell is coming back to the fighting scene and, and he wants to fight a woman. You know, he figures women and men are the same and so why don't you get in the ring? I think one of the Brazilian you girls know, can go up against Why don't we get you in the ring because men and women are the same and women can do anything men can do and why don't you go fight Chuck Liddell? You know, that wouldn't even be smart now. Right. You know, when he's 90 years old, it wouldn't be smart. Right. You know, <laughs> all it takes is one accidental punch to hit you. And that could be the end of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, but. Well, I feel, so, I mean, just a off the cuff example, when my, this was when we met 20 some years ago. I was visiting my grandpa in the nursing home. He had Alzheimer's and um, in Alzheimer's, sometimes they'll go through kind of angry fits yeah. and they don't remember you or they, they don't even recognize people around them. And one of the nurses, he was in the bathroom and one of the male nurses, because they needed to have male nurses, yeah. right, especially, yeah. <clears throat> was trying to help him. And he um, came into the bathroom and he kind of came too. Yeah. And, and kind of like recognized settled, you. Yeah. And, and, kind of came out of the fit a bit, but even he was 70 some years old, frail, yeah. and still very strong. Uncontrollable, and, yeah. Yes, and the male nurse was like, yeah, he he, he kicked me where, you know, yeah. where it hurts most. He was happy, the male nurse was happy you walked in. <laughs> Probably, and, yeah. and you know, he was like most older people, former military and stuff. And so mm. those things just come out, right? Mm. And including speaking of emotions and past mm -hmm. history. And yeah, I think women need to have more examples like that yeah. in their life. Like need I watched to have real it. life stuff happen and be like, oh yeah, I can't do everything. And that's okay. It is okay. I, I watched a video the other day. So guys are having, uh, uh, guys have no problem asking for help now. Women don't know this because they don't <laughs> because they don't ask women, right? Yeah. So, but remind me of that. But I watched this video uh, several months ago, or maybe even a year ago, of this old guy walking down the street, had a cane, you know, seventy plus years old, walking down the street, and these four young bucks came up to him and were trying to rob him or harass him. It was on a security camera, right, or a street camera, whatever, mm -hmm. and. That guy dropped the cane and boxed the shit out of those four young guys. Mm. And they they all, all the young guys, they were faster than that guy, but he had training and he bobbed and weaved and moved and threw the right punches and all four of them were on the ground as he walked away. He had, he had trouble picking up his cane, <sighs> but he boxed the crap out of them. You know, so it, it, yeah, if you have training and you have those types of skills, like you said, your grandpa, I mean... He might have thought he was fighting somebody in the war. Well, it was, and, you know, it was a nurse from Africa, you know. Oh, and, yeah. And a very her, unfamiliar. Yeah. yeah. To especially a white guy from a small town, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah. Very unfamiliar. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, guys asking for help, right? Guys have no problem asking another guy for help. But guys don't ask women for help. That's why women think, you know, you're driving in the car, we should ask for directions. I know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> and then the woman is silent for a minute and goes, uh, is that the gas station we got gas at again? <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm, I'm learning the town. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the truck is stuck on right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for something. Keep your eyes out for this, you know. Yeah, I need to go to the bathroom. That's, I meant yeah, to come I gotta, back here. I got to stop him. <laughs> No, it's, you know, it, 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 there's ego involved sometimes, you know, and, and, but yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to ask for help from people that you don't think can help. Right. Mm -hmm. And that gets kind of locked into a guy, you know, when, when he asked somebody that he thought could help and couldn't help. And then mm -hmm. he's like, ah, I might as well just do it myself. Mm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Number, uh, read 13 and 12. I couldn't remember because you couldn't read your own writing. Um, <laughs> number okay. 12 or 13, I put a star by. I couldn't remember which one it was. Okay. 12 is marriage needs regular maintenance. Don't be lax about it. 
And 13 is make your relationship your highest priority. Yeah, I, I think it, it was number 13. Okay. <laughs> um, the, number 12 is good too. Mm-hmm. They're um, similar. They're very similar. Yeah. Incidentally, both from guys. Right. Once you get to 11, they start mentioning guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. One through 10 are all women. So making your relation. So we did a, a three-part series. Um, it's called the Submission Series on our YouTube page. It's in its own playlist. And there's we did uh, submission to your relationship, submission to your husband, and submission to your wife. Mm-hmm. Now. It's a good point. Uh, just a moment, okay? Yep. Go. So the submission series you were talking about. Yes, the submission series is a three-part series. And it's funny because most people that know me would think, okay, John and Tara are going to talk about submission in a, in their relationship, right? Mm-hmm. In their marriage. So what do you think John is going to say? And most people would be like, oh, John's going to say, of course my wife submits to me, blah, 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 right? Because most people are not very understanding of how things actually work. So when, you, when we sat down to record the first one, we had this idea that we were going to do a submission talk, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't called a series at that point. Right. And as soon as you said to me, okay, let's talk about submission, where would you like to start? I said, the first thing you need to submit to is your relationship. Mm-hmm. And we submitted to our relationship. And our second one was the wife submitting to the husband. And our third one was the husband submitting to the wife, which nobody talks about, right? Mm -hmm. We have the most brilliant submission series on the internet in all of the world. We have, it should be a book because the only way you're going to have a great relationship and every guy knows this, that has a great relationship. You have to submit to that relationship. You don't get a great relationship by just commanding your wife to do stuff. And she goes, yes, husband, yes. You know, that, that's not how it happens. Sorry if that sounded a little Japanese, but I was just, I was just being culturally <laughs> uh, appropriative. So, you know, it, it, uh, it, it very much is about the relationship. Because if you don't prioritize that, you're not going to have anything. If the woman is just following the man, you know, brain dead, you know, automaton going, yes, 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 yes. The guy is very much going to lose interest. The guy is not going to be intrigued. He's not going to be turned on. He's not going to be, I mean, yeah, every guy likes a, a, a beautiful woman to have, you know, fornications with, <laughs> but you know, it, you, you want that intellectually stimulate stimulization, like we talked about in whichever other number it was, yeah. but <coughs> that's, that's where I come in. You know, that you, you have to be working on your relationship first. Yeah. You know, you're you're already an individual. You already know each other. You've learned about each other. And you're going to learn more if you focus on your relationship and submit in that way. Yeah, out of the 15, I thought that was the most practical. And it's kind of also the most like, well, duh. But, yeah. you know, well, you can't overlook. I think it's the most overlooked. I really do. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, on our... On our uh, 10 marital arts, our number one is patience, number two is communication, number three is cooperation. Mm -hmm. You know, those three things focus on the relationship. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in there about make sure that you're following your man to the end of the earth and no matter what he says or... Or how you communicate. I mean, it's just... Right. Sometimes it's just as simple as communication. You can't prescribe that because... You don't know what level the people are at that that you're talking to, right? Yeah. So you would want to use communication as a concept, mm-hmm. you know. Communication for some people might be writing notes, you know, and and might be leaving gifts, might be flowers, might be whatever, you know. It's might be hugs and massages, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, everybody's different. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? About that one in particular, sure. I think yeah, it's 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 the most basic and like I said, almost kind of like duh, but you can't overlook the basics. Sometimes you get so caught up in the details 
that you know like a list of 75 okay great it, there might be something that kind of puts a spin on things that helps someone to see things differently so I'm not necessarily putting down having some variety but don't overlook just even the basics I think that a list of 75 is overly redundant and confusing and sometimes I think that's done on purpose to keep people confused so they like it was from marriage.com well now you have to go to marriage.com for some information because they just gave you an encyclopedia of what you have to do to be in a relationship you know and it's like okay well um how do, how do we do that well let's listen to this well on marriage.com you can probably contract with any of these therapists to talk to them about your relationship right yes okay so there you go and, it's a sales 75 and, is a sales tactic now well into for ad space um, it's marketing to to your customers, right? So just be aware as you're seeing right. stuff like that. We're right. we're trying to cut to the chase, obviously. And so number fifteen, yeah. I wrote down plus and instinct. So what is fifteen? Plus and instinct. Take care of your marriage health and protect it from predators. Yes. So that to me was instinctual. You know, as a guy, as a guy, it's instinctual. You know, if I like you, other guys will like you. <laughs> this one was also written by a guy. So it's very instinctual for me to say, yes, I got to protect my relationship against predators. And, and, and that's is, not only men. Yeah, well, what else would you include? And it's not women being attracted to you. It's women going after me. So I have to protect myself. I'm protecting my relationship by making sure that another woman can't... <coughs> Sauch. Another woman can't. Oh, gesundheit. Danke. I'm multilingually. Mm -hmm. So, if 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 a uh, if a woman, um, so I'll I'll bring this up. I had an incident in the past where a woman wanted to date me. I worked at a place, and a woman wanted to date me, and I wouldn't date her, primarily because I was married at the time, <laughs> <laughs> and and um. She then went to the manager of the facility and said that I was hitting on her or doing something inappropriate. I don't remember at the time, or I don't remember now, what happened at the time, that, or what she was saying happened. And I had to quit, you know, because I was like, no, that didn't happen. And my manager was like, the, and I actually was in tears. I, I loved the job I was working at, and I didn't want to go, and I didn't want to date this gal. Right. And he's like, she's threatening to make a complaint. And if this ends up going to court, he's like, you're going to lose because it was at that time in our society when, you know, it wasn't believe all women, but women were, were getting the upper hand, especially in court. Well, I'm sure the manager didn't want to lose you either. He didn't. Well, he, he told me to quit. He didn't want to lose me, but, right, as a worker. but he, he didn't, he told me, he says, you don't want something like this going on your record, you know, and, you know, we both knew it wasn't, he knew, he came to me and he's like, hey, he's like, I know you didn't do anything, but here's what's going on. And, and I'm like, oh, man, you know, and I, I learned, I learned that pretty, you know, because me and her, we did close the place a couple times, you know, as, as responsible workers, we weren't like, you know, it wasn't like a bar, like, hey, we're closing it up, ah, you know. Yeah. But we were putting food away and taking care of things, and and it was it was a mistake. It was a mistake, first of all, for for him to schedule us together, a guy and a gal, mm -hmm. right? It should have been two guys or two gals closing, and that's what I would recommend to people for sure. Don't be alone with a woman, and don't be alone with a child. This this number fifteen, that's where we're at, right? Yes. Is so practical. Is such. Like, a guy wrote this. You could tell. Anyways, Douglas Weiss, shout out. He's a psychologist. So this is the one. Take care of your marriage health and protect it from predators. So predators are not just other men or women. Keep your marriage structures healthy. Share your feelings daily. Praise each other at least twice a day. Spiritually connect every day. Keep sex consistent and both of you initiate regularly. Make time to have a date at least a couple times a month. Treat each other like lovers instead of spouses. Respect each other as people and friends. Protect your marriage <coughs> from predators like these. <clears throat> Being too busy, 
mm-hmm. other outside relationships and entertainment. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy in this just this mm-hmm. small paragraph mm-hmm. gave terrific advice. Yeah, I would say your job can be a predator. Your friends can be predators. Your you know, and not always in a nefarious or a, a overtly bad way, but just like you said, being too busy. You know, you can't yeah. you can't just say I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm tired, I'm tired all the time, you know. So it goes back to prioritizing your relationship. Absolutely. You you do have to make the time for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I go back to our list. If you're patient, you communicate and you cooperate, then you're prioritizing your relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as I was just making notes for that could be something that we can expand upon. I wrote number 14 is confusing. Uh, build prowess in both verbal and nonverbal communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to even go into it? We're almost an hour and a half in. Yeah, that can be confusing, you know, to, to tell somebody build, to build prowess, you know. Um, that, that sounds like kind of manip- manipulative lingo. You know, it's like... I would like somebody to learn to communicate properly to their spouse. You know, it's not like... So I can see where she's coming from. So her name is Jacqueline Hunt. She's a special needs life coach. So I would imagine in special needs, you have to have Mm -hmm. other tools. You have to be especially versed in nonverbal communication, you know, and helping people build, build other skills. Yeah, but if you're telling a special needs person to build prowess, what are you saying? Well, That's the, not plain speech for a simple person. The number one piece of advice a therapist or any professional would give to a married couple is communicate with each other. Mm. I always laugh at this advice because it's one thing to tell people to communicate and another thing to show them what this means. So I think coming from the special needs coaching perspective. Okay, here comes the Communication involves both verbal and nonverbal expression. When you communicate with your partner, make sure you are looking at them. Make sure you're experiencing internally what they are conveying to you externally. I don't think that's always appropriate. And then ask to follow up questions and show them outwardly your understanding or confusion until both of you are on the same page and satisfied. Communication is reciprocal, both verbally and through intricate nonverbal indicators. This is the best brief advice I could ever offer a couple. So no. I, <laughs> I, I th- do think it's helpful, you know, that we can see that, you know, there are specialties, right? Because you can't internalize everything. What if the person in front of you is irrational? I guess we'd have to understand what they're saying by special needs because... Um, there's it a whole variety. sounds like she's going way too highbrow for a special needs person, hmm. right? I mean, if you if you're not if you don't hardly communicate at all, well, you know she's she's going. It's like she's talking to her colleagues, right? Or is she trying is she trying to work with people who are on the far end of the autistic spectrum? Who don't um, identify with other people's emotions and how they're and they have miscommunication problems because they're not understanding and internalizing or empathizing. No, I would use very simple, basic words, and I would start with fundamental, you know, structure and emotion and you know, basic stuff. She's really like up there and out there, like you know. Yeah, but going back to the number 15, the guy just kind of, yeah. you know, just have a date twice a week, you know, just like really practical. Yeah, you know, he's stuff the that one you... that should be helping the special needs people. <laughs> well, and that's... If a... I don't even know what special needs means in this context. You know, yeah. What are they doing on a dating site? If they're like Marriage needs. therapy advice, yeah. yeah. Or... Well, sometimes... How'd you... they even get married? I mean... <laughs> Sometimes I mean, are we talking might... about my buddy that I call a retard? Is he special needs? Or are we talking about, so you know, is... an actual on the spectrum autistic person? You know, it's like, geez. Well, or sometimes when you're really upset, and I've never thought this about you, but when you feel like your, <laughs> your spouse is a special needs person. Like, Thank you for the disclaimer. Are you hearing me? <laughs> I am not. I know. I know. Okay, John. Like, okay. If you've gotten this far. But I had something <laughs> caught in my throat. <laughs> 
so isn't that the way you do it if you're a comedian you do you say an insulting thing and then you just say oh, i didn't mean that. So that that's how the comedians do it and then they go oh, i'm a comedian so i was playing a comedian there for a moment you're playing a comedian yeah i didn't i didn't really mean that well i think it is <laughs> it is important and helpful to understand or consider the perspective of the people giving advice you know yeah. we have been married for over 20 years yep we have been through some shite as they say, and maybe we'll talk more specifically uh, about some of those instances, but we can attest to, yeah, you you don't need to overcomplicate it for sure. I think that last one is, although this was a long list, I think it was good that we at least got to 15, you know? If they had put that at number one, they wouldn't have to keep reading a number of these, actually. Yeah. So Douglas Weiss, you're getting a big shout out. Woo, yay, go Dougie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, okay, final question. Oh, wow. final. Oh, no. All right. Oh, penultimate oh, I... final question. Ooh. Penultimate question. Nice. So, if we were to go to a counselor, would you be okay with someone like Doug by what he wrote? Um. <laughs> John's rubbing his forehead and his eyes. <laughs> Breathing through my hand. <laughs> I. Okay, well, well. This is a whole new thing. I mean, what do we need to go to a counselor for? <laughs> what, what do you? What can't you say to me here in front of all of America? What can't you say to me here that okay, you well, need a counselor let's for? Put the, let's put do it. Do you need someone on your team, Tara? You need a. You need to assemble a group against me. Is that what's going on? Would he? If someone were like. My wife and I are having problems. I have no idea where to start or where to go to. Now I'm totally doing a plug for marriage.com therapists and stuff like that. I mean, they just... Not sponsored, but geez, you guys should be sending us something. Wow. Yeah, or at least for Doug. <laughs> go okay. Dougie. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's quite a testament. Yeah. Very practical. Yeah, that, you know? that one statement he wrote was awesome. I don't know. I, I you know, yep. I've said some cool shit too, you know. <laughs> okay, well, let's write it down and put it on a blog, and then it will. Well, be no, official. I want to hear what what's one thing you think you need to talk. You need to have somebody else in the room to talk to me about. It's when I don't feel like you're hearing me. Is it because you're not saying it? No. Nope. Okay. No, what I, is I'm it? Just, what is it? I don't. You don't have anything right now, or do I you? don't have anything right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, I'd go to Doug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The timing might, not, might not be right in the future, but yeah, right now I'd go. All right. <laughs> you ain't got right. nothing you're coming at me Doug, with. Doug, it's John and Tara. <laughs> okay. Yeah, final. the problem is, guys, they can get a hold of these counselors online these days. So you might have, I might have an appointment tomorrow I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> what, last question. What percent do you think you talked to this podcast and what percent do you think I talked uh, it was definitely over 65% me, probably 70 plus. We'll just give a number. 74. 74. Are we betting something on this? I don't know. Maybe we should. All day blowies, if I'm right. Oh, geez. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're likely right. Aren't you that dedicated wife? Is Aren't it? You? But <laughs> if you go over, have you blown it? <laughs> I've <laughs> never, I've never blown it. <laughs> not winning the showcase showdown. Oh. Well, I don't think it was seventy four. Like? I will say <laughs> you want, really funny. You want a massage and a bath drawn for you and Oh, that's so easy. You know, why do women never want sex when they win a bet? It's never like, Yeah, I want you to just rail me. <laughs> all the women that all all your No, yeah. Women? I've I've heard women bet things and it would pass with their husbands and the guy's always like, Ah, if I win I get a blowjob and the woman's like <laughs> If I win, I want a spa day. <laughs> you know, the guy's like, "Damn it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose." <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Maybe by the next one, I'll have an answer for you. Okay. Yeah. See, there you go. Next Tip time. Typical. No, I don't think it's seventy. I think you've gone over. Uh, Seventy-eight. Uh, <laughs> no, Eight. you said seventy-four. Eighty-one. Oh, you think I went over? Yeah. By bit. You think I'm blowing the showcase showdown? Yeah. Do Price is just, right reference. Yep. Bing. Price is right. Hashtag price is right. Hashtag price is right. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say 68 for John. Hashtag marriage.com. And a, and a place like marriage.com would be, would be remiss if they did not at least talk to us and 
beg us to do something that they could put on their site on video. Mm. They can go and they can watch our videos, being married for 22 years, knowing what we know, running businesses together, running separate businesses, being ups and downs in life, uh, you know, being wealthy, being broke, going back and forth, you know, in, in the business cycle. They, they, a company like that should have couples like us, and I'm giving them a million dollar idea, yeah. coming on their podcast, doing talks about it, not just, I mean, they can have the therapist asking the questions or the therapist being the interviewer, you know, mm -hmm. million dollar. Or just, or just send in questions. Million dollar a month idea. They could poll their therapist. What questions would you ask uh, a couple like this? Or just, yeah, and then well, we can just even they would them. be marketing their therapist if their therapist is the one asking the questions because people get to see that person and go, oh yeah, I want to talk. All the women would be like, I want me and my husband to talk to that person, mm -hmm. and all the husbands would be like, there's no reason. <laughs> no I talk to you every day. What are you What are you talking about? What are you not understanding? There's no reason to go there. Talk to that. You know, well, they could do it online. We could be here for lunch tomorrow and be like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna work. I'm 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 not be coming home for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that would be a good idea. It is a All great right. idea. That is a great idea. Marketing right. genius. All right. Well, I've got. Lots of notes, mm. and I need to put them into notes. All right. So uh, until next time, we've got some great ideas for next time, too. How about uh, how men, how to motivate your man from a man's perspective? Woofta. Woofta. Bam, bam, one. boom, boom. There right. we go. Bye-bye. Later. <laughs>